actually spent maybe the last five years of my life as a computational designer uh, for uh, for Rosé. Uh, so we got probably like six people from Rosé here right now that can uh, either validate whether or not I was good at it or kind of keep me in place. It's a good thing too, I'm not showing any of your any of the projects here. You don't have to be just worried about that. Um, but, you know, so I was a computational designer for maybe about, you know, five years. Um, and also, also an architect. Um, and I've kind of moved into a role that's more about uh, business, de business development and leadership, uh, or design leadership. Uh, so I find myself uh, you know, looking at the project, looking at projects from a different, from a different perspective. Uh, less about, uh, less about the tools in terms of um, kind of creating an output or creating kind of a finalization of, of a design idea, and really trying to find ways to, um, you know, use the application of computational design in the early phases of a project, uh, where you can dif differentiate yourself uh, as a firm. Uh, from some of the other uh, other firms that you might be competing with. Um, so how do we use computational design to do things like, um, you know, uh, look at the client's pro forma uh, and look at, you know, revenue opportunities for the client? Uh, how can we start to look at things like construction costs at the very early stages of the project? Uh, so that's really what we're trying to do at AECOM at the moment. Uh, so the image that you're looking at here is an application of that. Uh, there's a project that we're currently working on uh, where we're designing four, uh, four towers. Uh, it's a combination of residential, uh, residential and, and hotel. Uh, so kind of a unit-based uh, uh, tower. Uh, so we, we, we thought about, okay, well, how can we use the computational design tools in this process, uh, but still allow the designer to design the building? Uh, so this is this is uh, just you know an example of a computational application. Uh, so what we've done, what we've done here, and I wasn't the one that developed this. I kind of you know talked to one of our team members, our computational design lead, or one of the one of the leads about this uh, this particular project. Uh, and what they what they've done here is they've developed this tool that allows. Um, uh, they can get quantities from uh, from the client. So they look at the client's pro forma, they look at the number of uh, units that the client wants. Uh, they're able to, uh, within uh, within a massive design, give an output of the number of units that can be fit within the building, the number of units per floor. Uh, the, thing that, the thing that's probably most important about this is to understand from a computational design standpoint, um, what are the limitations? What can you use the tool for? Uh, so right away when I first looked at this, I said, okay, well, it's pretty cool what you're doing, uh, but can I get a floor plan from this? That mm -hmm. was the first thing that I asked him. I said, no, I can't get a floor plan from it. So right away, you have to kind of understand what the limitation of the tool is. This tool is going to give you a general idea of the number of units that you can get in the building, units per floor. Uh, it, it can also tell you how tall the building is going to be. So if you look at pro forma, if, if my designer is doing a shape like this, and we look at the pro forma and find out that the, uh, the, the revenue generation for the client requires 300 units. We can take that shape, we can do a unit mix of 300 units, and it will tell me, okay, this is what you're actually going to get from a massing perspective. Uh, so this is what, again, this is kind of what we're doing. Understanding the limitations, understanding the generalities, and understanding how far you can take it. Now, when I talked to the guy that developed this, he said, yeah, we can take it a lot further, but we have to find that point of diminishing return when it comes to the use of computational design. Um, another thing that we're doing uh, currently at, at, at AECOM is we're thinking about how to include computational design in the early phases of the project. So we're writing computational designers into, um, into, the, into the proposal. Uh, so if we have a project that will require some computational design or could use some computational design, we'll write that in, we'll write hours in for that, uh, for that use as part of the architectural suite. Uh, so I just flipped through some of these slides to give you an idea of like how they, how they develop this. Right away, again, you, if, you, if you pay attention, I mean, it looks cool when you look at it, but if you pay attention, you see the limitations right away, right? Rectangular units, you're not gonna have all rectangular units in the building. Right, so again, this is just a general idea of what you're going to get as an output. Now you can make it a lot more detailed if you want. 
but you have to think about how much time is it going to make how, how much time is it going to take to make this a really detailed tool that is able to solve multiple problems uh, and we can do things like let me see some some cool images in here to kind of show um, you know so other things other problems that you might be able to solve so this uh, red band right here in each of these would represent uh, spaces that are required on every floor uh, so let's say you, you have a maid closet or a janitor's closet that you want to put on every floor, so they built that into the tool. Uh, again, this is kind of a one-off situation, right? So as you kind of work through the problems that you're trying to solve, the designer says, hey, you know, we need to have this on, the, on, on every floor. Can you put that on every floor? Uh, the idea uh, when you start answering or asking those questions is, you know, there's a certain amount of re uh, revenue generating opportunities on each floor. But we, we don't want to mislead ourselves and make the entire floor a resident generating floor. There's spaces that need to be considered uh, when, you, when you approach the design that way. So, you know, again, this isn't like really an amazing thing. I think what Zuby just showed was like mind blowing in terms of how you can use computational design to build something really cool. Um, but this, this is more about like really thinking about the practical applications of computational design. Aside from, uh, you know, creating documentation and those types of things, but how can we start to use computational design to differentiate ourselves uh, in competition, uh, but also to kind of elevate ourselves in terms of what we can deliver to the client uh, early on in the early 